Welcome to Financial Planning Explained. I'm your host, Mike Menninger, Certified Financial Planner, owner and founder of Menninger & Associates Financial Planning. Um, I, I am really excited about today's guest. In fact, so excited that we decided that we were going to do three episodes. Uh, I've had the opportunity to speak with Marty a couple times before, and the hardest thing to do is to put the phone down. And it's not because I talk too much or he talks too much, it's just everything was so fascinating that the original intent is I'll bring you in for an episode, talk to him the first time, I said, I think we can do two. And then when I talked to him the second time, I said, man, we, we got to do three episodes. There's no way in the world we can get this all done. So uh, with no further ado, I would like to welcome today's guest, Marty Greenbaum, who is a certified franchise expert. Welcome, Marty. Thank you for joining. Michael, thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here with you today. I'm excited. We've had some great talks. I, lo- I'm, I just can't wait to get into it with you guys. Well, that's great. You know, um, it, it's ironic the timing of us meeting, uh, however long it was ago uh, that we met. You know, it was interesting, and, and we could talk about this at some point. It was ironic that I had a client reach out to me about the concept of uh, being a franchise being offered to him, or he had the opportunity to buy. I never even knew people like you existed in this world. And you know you're a consultant, et cetera, et cetera, which we'll talk more about. But before we get into the whole thing, Marty, why don't you take a few minutes and talk to me about you know tell the viewers you know why are you here? I used to love that idea. How you know why? What got you started in this? Um, you know, tell me, tell me about yourself. Go have at it. Great, great, yeah, I'd love to. So. Um, you know, you said, you know, that, that comment, why are you here? <laughs> um, at, at, at this point in my life, I'm, I'm going to be 60 in two weeks. And really, I'm here to help people get into business. I'm here to, you know, make sure that we do everything we can, that if they're going to make a decision to get into business, it's going to be a smart decision. And it's a well thought out uh, decision that they know how to do the right due diligence. So I'm in a lucky spot here. You know, at this point in my life, I work with people across the nation. I've worked with hundreds of people, um, helping them explore franchising and helping them make sure that if they do invest in a franchise, let's make sure it's the right move for them. So um, in regards to my background, now I grew up in a franchising family. So uh, originally from Chicago, family moved out to Las Vegas, as crazy as it may sound. And back in 1979, Vegas was a whole different world. I was going to say, it wasn't that crazy um, in 79 yet. Yeah, I've been here since 79. Crazy. Have you seen Elvis? Huh? Did you ever go see Elvis? Um, No, I didn't see Elvis. Actually, he died before that. I I went to see um, um, Frank Sinatra and Sarah Vaughn with my dad when I was like, I don't know, 16, 17. And that was an amazing concert, all right? So I didn't see Elvis, but I well, did I see Well, I just Sinatra realized after I said Bond. that, I'm dating myself, but I remember Elvis died, I believe, in 77. If not 77, it was in 78. But be that as okay. it may, so obviously if you didn't move there. We went off track, my apologies for that. <laughs> no worries, no worries. So I grew up in a franchise family. My, fr- my family started a brand called PostNet. Um, They're like UPS stores. They grew across the country and actually globally. And I was the guy, I was the youngest of four brothers, and I was the guy who had to open up the stores. So I opened up hundreds of stores um, working in operations. Then eventually I moved into marketing because that's what I had uh, got a degree in. And and, and I grew, uh, I basically grew a lot in that role. And I, you know, meeting people and helping them into business. It was a really neat experience, especially because I was in my early 20s, you know, as a young man. But um, I had I had uh, a, a different vision and I decided to leave the family company and get into marketing and start marketing companies. And through the years that evolved into just focusing on franchising. So I had a, you know, I had a great firm that I created in franchising. I was a marketing strategist to franchise companies for years. I, my clients included brands like Ben and & Jerry's and Smoothie King and Famous Dave's Barbecue and 
Hertz Redicar and Remax and Meineke and Fast Signs and just so many others. Uh, spent a lot of years, most of my career, focused on helping franchise companies grow. And I was at all these major conferences and expos and I, I went to uh, all their corporate offices and I spoke at conferences and you know, just grew my knowledge and skills. I uh, got to the point in life where I was traveling way too much. I have four teenage boys and I decided to sh make a shift. So for the past five years, I have been a franchise consultant and matchmaker, and I help people kind of figure out, you know, if franchising is right for them, if it makes sense, and if so, which franchise would make sense. And I love what I do. I've worked with some great clients and uh, it's exciting. I love to continue to learn about franchises. I'm familiar with over 600 brands. Uh, and this is, you know, this is what I do every day. Not a bad gig. See, this, this reminds me of why I knew we would be having three episodes. Because all I need to do is talk to you for two or three minutes or you talk and it keeps triggering questions that I want to ask you. So um, this leads obviously to the next, you know, what is a franchise as opposed to owning a small business. The two sound very similar, but have obvious differences. Please explain. That's a big question. It really is. So first of all, most people, when they think of franchising, when I ask people, what do you know about franchising or what brands come to mind? You know, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, Subway, kind of Dunkin' Donuts, I right, thought Chick-fil-A was, an, I didn't realize Chick-fil-A was a franchise. I thought Chick-fil-A was owned by somebody, I guess, in Georgia and that they literally owned all the stores. Apparently not. Right, right. They are a franchise. They're a really unique franchise, um, but uh, the way they structure their franchise agreements. But, but I'll tell you, franchising, I want you to think, and everybody will use the McDonald's story, right? A couple guys, and you know, franchises are started by entrepreneurs. Right, of a couple of guys came, you know, to figure it out a different way to make hamburgers faster. Use the like Henry Ford Model T, you know, theory of, uh, you know, how, how, like that assembly line production. And I'll tell you something, you know, they came, they come, they came up with something unique, and they had a great brand, and people were waiting in lines to have McDonald's hamburgers. Right, so you know, they decided, hey, we want to expand nationally, but they didn't have the money to do it. So franchising allows companies to expand nationally using other people's money, okay? OP money, yeah. And the thing is, is they realize that if somebody's going to come in with, you know, and, and, and buy into a franchise and they have the vested interest, then they're going to really be dedicated to the growth of that brand. But the, but the uh, key is that they wanted to maintain you know, brand standards, brand consistency, right. you know, and that's one of the key things about franchising. You want to be able to go into a location, no matter if it's in San Diego or New York or Florida and, and have that same experience. If you have a favorite smoothie at, at Tropical Smoothie Cafe, you're going to want to have that same smoothie wherever you go. You have an expectation. Franchising allows, so franchising allows these companies to grow nationally using other people's money and it's a great model but let's let's take a look at it a little bit you know from you know a franchisee a franchise buyer's perspective right so you get into a business that is a proven model that has systems that has you know training support marketing all these attributes and you could go into a business and say okay i could get into this smoothie business and I know exactly what it's going to cost. And they gave me a really good idea. You know, in, 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 uh, they have a franchise disclosure document. Every franchise provides a franchise disclosure document. So, you know, you, you could understand, like, what is it going to cost? How much money can I make? What success rates are they having? So um, when you compare that to going into your own smoothie shop, the fact is this. Most people that go into business on their own as an independent business. I don't know if people know this, but 80% of businesses fail within the first five years, okay? 80% okay. of business people fail. Doesn't so surprise me, by the way. It's crazy, huh? 
So the fact is, is you get into a franchise, the opposite is pretty much true. Close to 80% of um, franchise owners will make it past five years, right? So listen, you go into most people, when I went into business with my marketing companies, did I make costly mistakes? Yes, definitely. Did I know everything? Definitely not. Is there a big learning curve? There sure is. And, you know, there's no economies of scale. So, but, you know, franchising offers so many different benefits to, uh, to um, you know, a franchise buyer. But the key is what's going to be the right franchise is in the, and is this franchise for you? And we're going to get into, I, I believe, in our discussions because we touched on it. We're going to go a lot deeper in this in this series about how to really look at franchises, how to judge franchises. What do you need to know? So I don't want to go too deep because we've got so much to talk about. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Forward. Well, you know, one of the things that you brought up is some level of continuity. And uh, we're going to use McDonald's, and, and I don't know if we're supposed to or not allowed to do that, but it's a, it's a brand name. Uh, there's nothing new about it. I'm not endorsing it or saying good or bad. It's just a, a brand name that we all know. And so what you're saying with a continuity is that if I buy a Big Mac in Philadelphia, it's going to be the same Big Mac that I buy in Las Vegas, which is going to be the same Big Mac that I buy in Chicago. Now, the branding looks the same because you got the golden arches everywhere. Uh, you find that the store looks the same when you go in. Uh, so yeah, there's a continuity and it's a branding. It, they've done a great job with it. So the question is, is how much flexibility do you have and don't you have? I mean, I realize that you have to use all the McDonald's products. You have to use their napkins. You have to use, you know, all of the different things. Um, but what flexibility do you have? Do you have the flexibility in pricing or does the franchise, not franchise owner, what, what do you call McDonald's? Are they the owner of the, you're the owner of the franchise. What is McDonald's? Is that the franchise? They're the franchisor. All right, the and, franchisor. And, and then you're the franchisee. All right, so and, does McDonald's have the ability to control my pricing? Oh yeah, they they're do. gonna control your pricing. Okay. McDonald's definitely will. And most of the bigger franchises will do that. They're gonna set the pricing, but they're using data analytics. A matter of fact, I had a client who actually handled the pricing for Subway. And his sole job was to look at market conditions, look at how much food costs, look at everything, and develop the, you know, the uh, structure for their pricing nationwide and continually modify and adjust and change it. So, yes, most big franchises they're definitely going to do to um to you know provide you what the accurate pricing in your market based on okay, your so costs they, they so do on measure markets be. because but, you know but in certain franchises too you do have some degree of flexibility so it's not with every franchise but definitely those bigger brands for sure okay fair enough i mean that's why i'm thinking to myself you know if i buy a big mac in manhattan it's going to be costing me a whole lot more than if i bought a big mac in the middle of kansas in the rural Kansas. Exactly. So, exactly. Um, and, and I would think that it would give, so that is actually controlled by the franchisor more so. Yes, okay. definitely, okay. definitely. Okay, that's interesting. Um, believe it or not, we're already up against uh, our first break in the first episode. Um, so if you stay tuned, Marty will be back with you in just a few moments. And stay tuned, audience, we'll be back with you in just a few moments. Awesome. Do you keep up regularly with your investments? Where exactly are your hard-earned dollars going? Are you financially prepared for an emergency? I'm Mike Manager, founder of Manager & Associates Financial Planning. We believe that education and knowledge are powerful, and we want our clients to understand why we are making the recommendations that we make. It's your money, and you deserve to know where it's going, because it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. So call us today to discuss. Welcome back to Financial Planning Explained, and I'm still here with Marty Greenbaum and actually really, really enjoying the conversation about franchises. Um, so we talked about the, the standardization. That's a great word to use, the standardization, the pricing model, et cetera, et cetera. What we, you know, we talked a little bit, of too, about the difference between owning a franchise 
and starting your own business and owning a franchise obviously has been a proven model, whereas 80% of the people who own a franchise succeed beyond five years, whereas 80% of the people who try to start their own business fail within five years. And that's scary numbers, um, which you know just shows the advantage of owning a franchise. Um, so, so what does it cost to get into one uh, and like, do I need to know, let's say for instance, I wanted to buy a Subway or a McDonald's, but I know nothing about the restaurant business, okay? Do I need to have industry knowledge and what's it gonna cost me to get in? Well, first of all, the great thing about franchising is you don't need to have industry knowledge to get into most franchises. As a matter of fact, you know, think about it. Um, they, they, uh, they, they, they train you a specific way on their specific, you know, process. And, you know, if you were a painter, let's say, and you wanted to own a painting franchise, they don't want the painter to own the painting franchise. They want the corporate executive, somebody with business experience, somebody who could grow and scale a business, right? So and you don't need it to be a mechanic. You don't, they're not looking for mechanics to own an auto shop. You know, Meineke has, I think, seven, 800 locations. So the fact is, is if you have great transferable skills, then you can own a, you know, a franchise. People come into there with, you know, come into franchises with operational, logistics, sales experience, right? Those are great skills that are transferable to all kinds of different brands, and they're going to train you, right? So um, the, the other thing, you know, in regards to, the costs of buying a franchise. Let me break this down for you a little bit, okay? When I look at franchises, I kind of in my mind, there's service franchises, right? And there's retail franchises. Yeah. So in retail franchise, you need a store, right? So you're gonna build out a store. So that could be, when I say retail, it could be food, it could be hair care, it could be fitness, anywhere that you have a location. It could be healthcare right? Service companies, what are those? Those are oftentimes like home services. A guy comes out in a van, he repairs, you know, you got a plumbing issue, he's going to come out in a van. You get landscapers, you got, well, even in services like senior care, where they come and take care of grandma and, the, you know, somebody comes by, you know, three days a week or whatever yeah, that okay. may be. So when we talk about investments, right? Service companies, where you're bringing the service to someone's house or someone's business, you can get in much cheaper. That many of them are home based. Some of them have a small office, but that's like a hundred to two hundred thousand dollar investment on average. But if you get into a retail location, you know you're going to have a lease. You're going to have a build out. You're talking maybe three to six hundred thousand dollars, right? Now you don't have to come into that. You don't have to have that cash, right? You could finance that. We're going to get into financing, you know, franchise a little bit more. But typically, I, you know, you get into a franchise, um, they're going to have it all broken down. So keep in mind that if there is an investment range, and I shared with you like one to two hundred thousand dollars, right? There's a and there's a franchise fee, but basically they break down all the costs here. You're going to know what you're going to get into, and it's going to be very transparent. Okay. So I funny you say that because I was actually approached by uh, people who worked for a franchise, kind of managed it, but weren't owners, and they wanted to create their own franchise within it, okay, within that particular organization and they wanted to go to a new location and they were seeking investors and they were talking to me about it. And I ha it turns out that I didn't invest with it um, but I, because I didn't feel as though they had the right managerial experience and that's just me. Because right. gosh darn it, I don't want to be shelling out this money for them to be, Anyway, I can go through a long list of reasons why I didn't do it. But aside from that, so, so if I needed a couple hundred thousand dollars, the reality of it is that I could fan finance it, correct? You're saying I could finance that through the bank? Yeah, most people, most people do. Yeah, okay, okay. Most now, people. 
I don't know if you had planned on talking about this at all. I'm sure you were somewhere along the line, but I'm going to ask it because of the fact that it's on my mind. Uh, there's a show on TV that I actually enjoy. It's called Shark Tank, and I'm sure you've seen it. And Mr. Wonderful, right? He always <laughs> wanted to get royalties, okay? And I know royalties are a very important component of franchises. And the other guests on the panel, whether it be Mark Cuban or Lori Grenier or Robert on the right side, they always think that it's not good because it eats up profits, which I would imagine it does. But give me a, give me a sense of that. The royalties, I know, because I, I addressed this, I think it was like 6 or 8%, which means that for every $100 that they bring in for gross revenue, Six to eight percent is going for every hundred dollars in hamburgers. Six bucks is going to Mr. Mickey D, something like that. How big does that become as part of the overall business model? Well, listen, um, it really comes down to if I'm going to pay six percent of gross, what am I getting? Is the value there? Of course, it is long term value there, right? So, if you're so keep in mind this. 6% of gross is a pretty big percentage of net, right? So Without if you're paying, let's say you have a business that nets 20%, which is a decent number in business, right? Mm -hmm. You do a million dollars, you're going to end up with $200,000, right. right? Now, 6% is $60,000. Right. I just so when you look at 60 against 200, it becomes a much bigger percentage. Correct. So yes, you are. You have a partner in business with a franchise. That is correct. Is it worth it? That's the big question, right? Well, so the, is it worth it is I need to be able to do some business planning to determine whether or not my million dollar profit is or my million dollar income is going to produce $200,000 worth of revenue so that I still walk away with 140. Right. You know? So the, the thing is here that you have to think about and here's what, you know, I want to share with you. First of all, you get into a business that may have brand equity. So you have customers coming right away, right? You're going to maybe most likely with most franchises, not all, because um, there's great franchises and there's not so great franchises. I'll be honest with you. Well, we'll yeah, talk of course. About that. But you're going to have, you know, stronger business, more revenues than you, if you were to do this as an independent. You're going to be able to get into a business with that proven track record, you're going to have advantages like in marketing and technology that you wouldn't have as an independent. You couldn't afford, you know, multi-million dollar technology that's going to help customers really um, connect with the brand better and create more efficiencies in your business. You're not going to be able to enjoy the marketing and 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 be on the front page of Google and have marketing that really drives business. So you could look at a franchise and say, geez, I got to pay that 6% and that's terrible because it's a lot of money and, and there I have a partner. But the fact is they're bringing so much to the table, a good franchisor, it's worth it. Okay. I, I, and here's what people do. They scale, they scale. So how many people, how many stories have you heard of people that own 10 McDonald's or 15 McDonald's or, you know, all these other brands? Uh, you know, there's a guy here in Las Vegas uh, who started with one mining key car care center and five years later he had 14. Okay. So the other great factor of this is franchises are built to scale. And if you're looking to grow something and, and really, build your net worth it's a great way to do it and there's a lot you know there's a lot of other discussions here i know that i hope i answered your question pretty good no actually so let me ask you this as it pertains to scaling by the way i think six percent is actually not bad and i keep yeah. using mcdonald's because of the fact that in what you said you were referencing the fact that uh, you know i don't have to and i compare the joe's hamburger shop okay I have no idea what I am going to get out of Joe's Hamburger Shop. McDonald's is a terrific franchise in the fact that I know what I am getting. And therefore, I pass a McDonald's and I say, hey, I want to go in. Or I may be thinking, hey, I want a hamburger. I want to go to McDonald's. And I, again, I'm using that as the example. So I see the value in just the branding. So I, I have to imagine that different companies have different percentages in royalties, correct? 
They do, and I'm not. And just to say, I, we're not saying that McDonald's is six percent. I want to make oh, that I, clear. No, I, I'm not right? even. I'm I, just do, I definitely want to disclaim that. Okay, we're just using that as an uh, example. Fully aware but, of that. Thank you for clarifying, right. because I know in this particular situation, the franchise fee was six percent of gross. Six percent okay. is that high? Oh. No, actually, six percent is is. Um, Close to average, you know, okay. I would say seven is average. Okay. Once it gets to eight, it starts to bother me. And I don't see many franchises at nine or 10, very so, rare. So right? for what it's worth, I, and, and just to point it out, I didn't want to sound like the naysayer with regards to the six or seven or 8%. I can absolutely see the value, okay? Because if I own a franchise that has a recognized name, okay, and they're providing me with all of the software, the guidance, the training, that is invaluable and you know right. but you got to know how to run the business you got to know how to run staff you got to and i have to imagine that first of all the fact of the matter is the franchise or has some skin in the game and it's not that they have skin in the game per se because the franchise or is not going to really lose money but they're motivated for me to be successful because the more successful i am the higher their 6%, because 6% of 100,000 is less than 6% of a million. But do franchises or franchisors, do they provide discounts based upon the level of income that I generate from a franchise? Or no, or is Not it flat? Rarely. I mean, there are a handful of franchises that have declining um, royalties, all right? It's rare. I'll okay. be honest with you. Okay. So, um, but here's the thing that you you hit on. Okay. Keep. I want people to understand this. And and you know you get a good franchise that has taken their business model and distilled it down and and into the best business model, most profitable. Why? Because we just talked about it. They're getting royalties. So if you have, you know, McDonald's or any other brand with hundreds or thousands of locations. They're in it. They're in the business of royalties. Okay. So they're going to take this business model and every aspect of the business and say, how do we optimize this? How do we make sure that our franchise owners, whether it be better training, better technology, awesome new marketing, you know, better vendors, better supply, whatever that may be, that's the benefit of franchising. You know, they're really looking at this and saying, let's make it the best it could actually be. And you don't have that as an independent. Oh, of course right? not. I, trust me, Marty, I see the value. Uh, believe it or not, we're already uh, at the end of our first episode. So what I would like to do, uh, if production can show a slide showing you know, your contact information. Um, we'll be going on with uh, more episodes. And so for now, I just like to sign off and say I look forward to the next couple episodes that we are going to have with you, Marty. So for those of you thank who you. joined us, thank you very much. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you for the next couple episodes with Marty. So once again, uh, Financial Plan and Explain, and I'm your host, Mike Menninger, Certified Financial Planner. And I look forward to seeing you on future episodes. Thank you for joining us today.